Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jackie and let's get started. I'm taking one of these wood puzzles. They're from the children's section of the Dollar Tree and the back of it is wood. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up and I'm going to hot glue all the pieces to it. And now I'm going to go in with some Waverly Antique Wax and a baby wipe and I'm going to paint a quarter of this piece like this. And then I'll take some of the Waverly white chalk paint and get the other side in white. And then I'll go in with some of the agave and do that section. And then lastly, some Waverly chalk paint in the color ocean. So I'll have this color combination. And now I'll go back in in the white Waverly chalk paint and just dry brush on the colored sections like this. And now I'll go in with some Apple Barrel bright yellow on the white part so it won't be so stark white and also to give it a little bit of a sunshine because Florida has a lot of sunshine. So this is my sunshine part. <laughs> and from the Cricut Design Space, I cut out this vinyl that's the shape of Florida with home on the inside. But as I lay it on my board, I noticed that the top part of Florida kind of disappears in that part. So I go ahead and, I don't show it, but I go ahead and add some Waverly Antique Wax to the top portion as well. And then that helps it look a little bit better. So right here, you'll see it right here. So now you can see a little bit better. And then I also created these words out of vinyl and they just say Florida days, beach days, flip-flop days. Yes, those are definitely my favorite days. <laughs> the beach days and of course flip-flop days, that's every day for me. Definitely every day. So I'll just put these on really quick. And now I'll just flip it over to the back and cover it up with some of the Dollar Tree contact paper because it's really quick and easy. And now I'll have to get rid of that little writing that's on there. So I'm taking one of these little flip-flops from a sticker pack, a wooden sticker pack from the Dollar Tree. And I'm removing the existing adhesive and I'll just use some of my hot glue to adhere this to my little sign. So just like this, I'll place it right on that wording. It's like the, like the little maker mark on there, the brand name on there. And now I'll go in with some of this nautical rope and place it on the outside edge to give it that coastal look and then that is it I'm done what do you guys think boxes from the Dollar Tree and some of the ears were broke off so I got them for, for 50 cents each. So I'm just going to remove all the stickers off of them. I'm going to leave the hangers on them because I'll use them and I'm not going to paint the frame itself because it's practically the same color that I'll be using for all of these DIYs today but I will paint the inside and I'm not going to do a perfect job because you'll see why. So I'm going to go in with some Waverly chalk paint in the color white, just one coat and I'm also going to use whatever's left on my brush to dry brush on the outside perimeter of this whole frame just to give it that weathered look that we all like once I get that done I'm gonna go in with some of these shells I have a, this bowl of shells most of them are from the Dollar Tree and so I'm just going to start gluing them onto the insides of these shadow boxes and that's why I didn't have to paint twice that's why I didn't really care about painting the inside too much because you're not gonna really see it, much of it anyway so I'm just going to start uh, placing these down as petals. So I'm going to attempt to create flowers out of these shells. So I start with five, pretty good sized ones. And then I'll add some smaller ones on the insides. And then I'll add some smaller ones than that until I start creating what looks like a flower. So now that's up to interpretation. <laughs> I mean, I think it looks like a flower. What do you guys think? <laughs> So now I'm taking these tiny little, they're like spiral shells, I don't know what they're called. You, you would think I would know what they're called, but I don't know what they're called. And I'm going to uh, start gluing these onto each other to create the center of a flower. To start gluing these little pieces to create the middle portion of the flower. And once I have that pretty much done, then I'll hot glue them on the inside and whatever is 
whatever gap is left I'll just continue to add some more until it fills the whole inside of the flower and I forget what that is called somebody comment down below and let me know what is the center of a flower called so what do you guys think this MDF sign that's on a stand and I'm just going to use the back portion but I do end up doing the front as well and I'm going to, going to go in with some of this Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and paint stand and now with my satin Mod Podge I'll go in and saturate the rest of it with the Mod Podge and I'll place some of some of the blue tissue paper so I'm that going to place that on there smooth it up and tear it up and just keep building and building until I get it the way I want it and I actually do this to the back as well. I do the front and the back. Well, this is the back. But I do the front and the back, and I just layer each piece of tissue paper. And now I'm going back to the pack of and tissue paper. I'm going to use the blue, and I'll do the same, the same process to the top of this little sign. And I'll just keep building it and building it. And the fact that it wrinkles is, is a plus because I want this to look like an ocean and like the ripples of the waves. So I'm just going to build this up with this tissue paper and just keep building and adding Mod Podge and building, just tearing up these pieces of tissue paper until I get it to look like this. And now I'll go in with some of this Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and with my Dollar Tree chunky chippy brush, I'll do a really light, light coating just to simulate the waves like this. And while everything's drying really well, I'm taking these little palm tree wooden stickers from this DIY sticker pack and I'm going to go in with this Apple Barrel Kelly Green paint and paint them up like this. And I also use some of the Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Hazelnut as well. So I use both. And look how cute. So now I'm taking some of the Stop. knot and I unraveled it to give me three pieces. And I'm going to add a dab of glue and place the trunk part of the tree on the rope to help simulate a tall palm tree. And I'll do this to all four of my little palm trees so they look like this how adorable so now I go back to my little sign and I'm just simply going to adhere these little trees onto my MDF board my little ocean scene to make it look like they're they're on the beach and there's the ocean so cute and now just to make it a little cuter I'm taking some more of this rope and I'm going to add a dab of glue and I'm going to adhere this to the whole perimeter of this little stand just like this and with my Cricut I cut out this vinyl from the Cricut Design Space and it just says Vitamin C. And I also cut out a little sailboat just to put out in the horizon where the dark water meets the light water. Look how adorable. <laughs> oh my goodness, I just had so much fun creating this piece. And now I have these little shells from the Dollar Tree. These are just from my stash. And I'm just going to place them to embellish them on the bottom to simulate the beach. So now just to gild the lily just a little bit more, I'm taking one of these little glass bottles from the Dollar Tree with the little cork tops and a random piece of paper and my pen. I'm just going to write real sloppy, help. <laughs> and I'm just gonna roll up this little piece of paper and stick it in my little glass bottle and hot glue it to my little setup. Oh, I also placed a little bit of sand in there and I put a little twine on it and then hot glue this to my little stand. And that is it, I'm done with this one. Number three, I'm taking one of the little flip-flops wood pieces from the sticker collection and some of this bright blue paint from Apple Barrel and I'm just going to paint it real quick. And I'm also taking some beads from Amazon and a little tag from Doll General and painting them white. And I used the same brush that I used for the blue so that's why the 
paint doesn't look really white it's kind of bluish kind of light bluish but I was happy with that and I'm also taking some other beads from Amazon and some dark blue beads from Dollar Tree and these natural beads these brown natural beads from the hair, hair section of the Dollar Tree and these long beads from my challenge box a little handful of them and so first I'm going to hot glue the little flip-flops onto the little tag like this and once I get that on there they fit perfectly on there and now I'll get some of the two twine and I'll add a little dab of glue to the end just so it'll be easier to thread all these beads through especially the little long narrow beads they're, they're a little bit of a challenge so I'll begin with one of those and I'll just thread these through and I'll just do a pattern with the bright blue and a natural one and then a light blue and so on until I get it looking like this and then I'll just attach this to the tag the two twine and then I'll thread that end back through the first two beads just to secure it in place so it won't come undone and I'll snip off any excess after the two beads and then I'll put them back through and on the other end I'll just create a quick little tassel I'll snip off the end and then I'll start wrapping this jute twine from the Dollar Tree around my hand about a good 20 times or so because this jute twine is pretty thin and then I'll bunch it together and take another piece of or I'll take the jute twine that's on the bead beaded garland and put it through and then take another piece and go around the tassel the top of the tassel tie it up and then I'll secure it in place and snip off the end cut the end open and then give it a little haircut and this one is done super cute what do you guys think I'm taking the little house that is so cute I really didn't want to use it but I knew I had to so I removed a little flamingo and I'm going to go in with some of the Waverly chalk paint in the color ocean and I'm going to mix it with some of the Waverly chalk paint and the color elephant. So I'll mix these two together to create the color that I'm looking for, which is kind of like a, like a darker blue, like a nautical blue. So I'm just going to paint this whole thing. And now I'm taking some of these craft sticks and I'm going to cut them in the width of this little house. And I'll cut two. And I'll take the two little cut craft sticks and some of the white apple barrel paint, paint those and then take some of the Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster and with my chunky chippy brush I'll distress this little house all the way around the perimeter and the side and the inside and now I'm taking some of the hot glue and I'm going to adhere these little craft sticks and place them inside the little house to kind of resemble shelves so once I get those nice and secure get them both on there I'll go in with some of the nautical rope and this time I won't cut it I'll just add a dab of glue and place it on the top portion of the little house and go through the whole perimeter with this nautical rope until I get it to look like this. Once I get that on there and I'm happy with the way it looks, I realize, wait a minute, I didn't do the top portion because I'm turning this little house into a boat. So I'm taking another craft stick and I'm going to mark the angles that I need to cut it. And I'll use my EMT shears, which cut through these little craft sticks like butter. So just snip those out and place that in place and then get another little piece of craft stick to fill in the top portion and then I go back in with the same combination of the two paints and then glue it in place and then I'm taking my lighter and I'm going to burn off all the fuzzies off this rope this rope is pretty good quality but it had some fuzzies and so I thought hmm, why not let's burn the fuzzies <laughs> I like the look and I like the smell and so now with my Cricut, I cut out these vinyls that say the ocean is calling and I must go and a little anchor. And I'll include the link to this cut file that I created in my description box for all of you. And so now just to gild the lily a little bit more on this project, I'm taking this little pen from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to remove the little donut and snip off the little bottom part on there. And I'm going to go in with some apple barrel paint and the color white and flag red. And I'm just going to paint this and turn it into a little lifesaver. And I don't show it, but I also add a little twine for the rope portion. And now for my most challenging item of my mystery box. And it's this bamboo turner. Well, it's like a spatula turner. And so I'm taking my box cutter and I'm just scoring it and scoring it and scoring it. 
until I get it to break off. And so let me tell you, this took this took some strength. This took some finagling. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie, <laughs> but I got it. <laughs> and so now I'm also gonna do the same thing to the end. And I even go in with my little Dollar Tree hacksaw. And then I go back to my box cutter to score it some more and my crafter square wood tools. And I just keep working it, working it, working it until I finally get it to pop open. And I pull it apart like this. So satisfying. <laughs> so now I'm gonna take my little miter shears and I'm going to snip the little end apart and I'm going to place it like this on the piece, on the long piece. And I'm going to secure it with some hot glue and I need another one, so I happen to have another one of these turners in my kitchen. So I went ahead and did the same thing. I cut off, I just cut off the end, which is all I, that I really need. So I cut off the end with my miter shears and then place it on that piece. And so now I'm gonna go in with some of the wood filler to help um, shape these little pieces, which are gonna become the oars to my little boat. So now they're looking like little spoons. <laughs> So now I'm gonna take some sandpaper and kind of sand them to give them some smoothness and some more shape. And I'm going to go back in with my Waverly chalk paint in the color Ocean and some of the white and paint them up like this and put a little bit of twine on the top and then glue them in place and add my little lifesaver for embellishment and that is it. pretty wood look picture frames from the Dollar Tree and it's really pretty and it's an 8x10 so it's a really nice size. The problem with this frame is that it was broken. There's glass everywhere so I ended up getting it for 50 cents which was a really really good deal for me because I don't need glass so I'm just going to very carefully remove all these shards of glass. I don't need them and look at the frame it's pretty. So I'm going to go in with some Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster. And with my little chunky chippy brush from Dollar Tree, I'm just going to add, add a tiny little bit of paint and I'm just going to lightly brush it on the frame, going with the grain. And look what it does to it. Wow. It just highlights all of the raised like parts of the frame. And you can see all the wood grain. So pretty. Look at that. Wow. So I'll just get it like I want it. Allow that to dry. Set it aside for a second. In the meantime, I'm taking some some scrapbooking paper that I had on hand and I'm going to just place it on my back part of the frame and kind of cut it with my finger knife, my finger utility knife and place it in my frame like this. So now I'm taking some of these really pretty shells from the Dollar Tree and when I found these at the Dollar Tree, oh my goodness, I was so excited because these shells are beautiful. They are really pretty and there's all kinds of sizes in there so I was excited to use this. So here I am taking them out and I'm trying to choose the smallest ones. So first I decided to do three, but then I changed my mind and decided to do four. So what I'm doing is I'm making flowers out of these shells. Yes, and look how cute. So here I decided to do the four and I was hoping that there was enough of the tiny ones. Some of them are pretty big. My frame is not that big. <laughs> it's eight by 10, but I mean, it's not a 11 by 13 or 17. So now here I'm taking some of this nautical rope, now that I have my shells placed where I want them, and I'm going to just snip off, well first I'm going to remove this plastic part, I don't need it, and I'm going to figure out how long I want my stem of my flowers to be. So I'm using my EMT shears and snipping it because this rope is hard to cut with regular scissors, I tell you. So here I have it all in place, and I'm going to also go in with some of this jute twine I've been using all day, and I'm just going to make a quick little bow. And that, those are going to represent the leaves on my flowers. So I'll do two of those. And right now I'm just placing everything how I want them before I commit to the glue. And so I'm also going to take some of this white nautical rope. And I'm just going to cut a tiny little bit, like literally, like it's like two inches or less of it. And I'm just going to take it apart and just use two strands. These strands will be the center of my flower with a little pearl in the center of it. 
how perfect so just like that i'm gonna glue it all up and now i'm just going to add one of these cute little laser cuts from the dollar tree and this one is the cute little angel fish and i'm just going to add a little dab of glue to the back and i couldn't decide if i wanted to be swimming away or swimming towards the little underwater flowers but i ended up doing to the left swimming away cute what do you guys think taking two more of these little shadow boxes from the Dollar Tree and then these have the glass inside and the writing inside so with these my best bet is to take a scraper and scrape off the words so just I'm going in downward motion just because it's easier for me but I'm making sure that my thumb is on the other side of the frame I don't want to get cut but if you feel safer to go upwards go upwards but for me it was just easier to go downwards it was like a better it's like an easier way to remove all this all the writing all the print that's on here so once i get that done it doesn't take me long once i get it done then i'll wipe it all clean get all the stuff off of it and now i'll remove these little clips that are on there i'm not going to use it i'm not going to use them instead i'll just hot glue the backing this time and now I'm ready to paint and I'll go in with some of the Waverly Chalk paint in the color Agave. And so just like this, got them all painted. And with some of the white chalk paint, I'll dry brush this frame as well with my chunky chippy brush. And I'll just go around the whole frame. And now with the backboards of these frames, I'm going to trace out some scrapbooking papers. And I'm going to go in with some of the Mod Podge, the matte one. And I'm just going to adhere these papers onto the backing, the two backings like this. And now I went looking through my laser cut stash and I found a cute little angel fish and I found a dolphin. So hey, those represent Florida for sure. So I placed a little angel fish on one piece and I placed the dolphin on the other. And I have some very fond memories of snorkeling at the Keys with my mother and looking at all the angel fish and then also seeing the dolphins swim around. So yes, these definitely represent Florida. So now I'm going to add some fun things to my little shadow boxes. I'm going to add some cute pearls just to give it a little bit of a glam style and some of these tiny little shells from the Dollar Tree and some more of these little spiral shells also from the Dollar Tree. And then this will just give it like a little shaker box kind of look. And all I have to do now is glue my piece back on to the frame. And look how cute they look! Super cute! So using my Cricut, I also decided to cut out some words for these frames for the outside. And I just did beach days for one and Florida days for the other. And I kind of wish I would have made them a little bit bigger, but it is what it is. But what do you guys think? So cute. galvanized flower metal planters and I'm using my crocodile to cut or poke some holes on the back two holes on each but in the end I realized I didn't need them at all so you can actually skip this part if you want to and you'll see in the final reveal that I don't even use the holes but it was my idea to use the holes so I made the holes <laughs> okay so now I'm gonna go back in with some more of the agave paint and paint them up and I'm also going to go in with some of the white chalk paint to dry brush as well. So I'll get everything all nice and dry brushed. Try to get the wording to pop out. And also add the white on the top and the bottom rims just to give it that extra coastal look. And I'll just continue to go. Go, go, go. And I'll do the backside, the inside. I'll do all of it. Even I even did the underside. And now I just need my S hooks to hang these up in my garden. But like I said, I end up not using the holes. So here's how they look. All finished, ready to go in the garden. And then 
Now I'll show you how they look in the garden, but the hooks are underneath. The hooks will be holding the pots from underneath and not the holes, like this. with one of these oval wood pieces from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to go in with this apple barrel color and the color Admiral Blue and some of this bright blue and some of this Key West Blue and I'll do both sides and I'll take some of this 100 grit sandpaper and kind of distress everything with some sandpaper and here I found these cute fish at the Dollar Tree as part of their shore living collection and I don't know what I did with the footage, but I just took a little bit of blue and dry brushed on some of the fish. That way I had a, very, a variety of different colors, some with blue and some with just a natural color. And I went ahead and adhered them to this plaque. Oh, and by the way, these fish have little clothespins and I left them on there. That way it gives them a little bit of height. So now here I'm just taking some nautical rope and I'm just cutting it to size. And making sure it's going to fit all the way around the oval but before i adhere this to my plaque i'm going to take a little bit of jute twine and just do a little bit of accents with the jute twine and just wrapping four sections of it with this jute twine to give it that more of a nautical look so here i'm just going to wrap it a good i don't know i think it was five or seven times or so snip off the excess and adhere the end with a little bit of hot glue and I do this to four corners of it so it looks like this and now I'm ready to adhere this rope onto my oval and I'm going to begin with the top and then go around to the other side all the way till I meet till it meets to the right side end and then the two pieces on the end I'm going to kind of gather them a little bit add a little bit more hot glue and then gather the ends they're kind of frayed, but I'm just going to gather them and take a little bit of some jute twine and wrap some jute twine around it to make kind of a little tail. It's a really small little tail. So if you want to do this, maybe make this piece a little bit longer, but I did make it work. I just tied it really tight and just secure it with a double knot. And now I'm going to take some more of the jute twine and I'm going to wrap it around my fingers to create a nice substantial size tassel and all I do is wrap it around my hand a good I think I did about 20 times and then I'll go ahead and tie the top with a nice double knot and I'll pinch it in the top on the top portion and take a nice piece of jute twine and wrap it around and tie it really tight and then I do end up adding more jute twine I felt like this was a little bit too small looking so you'll see in a minute how much more jute twine I add to the top of the tassel. And now I just cut it open and give everything a nice little haircut and get everything nice and even. And now I'm just going to tie this tassel onto the little tail that I created. So in a sense, this is going to be a fish with a school of fish inside. <laughs> how about that for a decor piece? But you've never seen that before. <laughs> so now I'm going to take my lighter and burn off all the little fuzzies because you know these pieces of jute twine they have a lot of fuzzies so don't give me an excuse you know I'm gonna do it <laughs> so now here I'm just gonna create a little hanger out of jute twine and place it on the top of the back and secure it with some more hot glue a nice glob of glue and here it is but now I'm thinking I need something else so I'm taking one of these tiny little pearls from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue and place it on the leader of the fish. Just for him on his little eye. And that is it. This is how it looks. What do you guys think?
begin with four of these arrows from the Dollar Tree from Crafter Square. And I'm going to use the same three colors that I used earlier and give this a nice paint job. And I'm going to go in with some of the 100 grit sandpaper as well, just to give everything a nice distressed look. And I'll do this to all four of my, what are going to be, beach houses. Yes. So just like this, and I do all sides. So now I'm ready to create some little roofs, roof lines, and I use the craft sticks like I did for my B sign. So I'll just go ahead and cut one to how I want it, and then I'll use that as a template to create the rest of them. So here I'll just go ahead and do them all and paint them white as well. And here they are. So now I'm just going to adhere these onto the roof lines with a little bit of hot glue and I'll just go ahead and do both sides and I think this gives it a really cute beach house look look at that so cute so I go ahead and do all four in the same manner and now I'm ready to do a little bit embellishing and I'm using these numbers from crafter square and I painted in white as well and now I'm going to use some of these other pieces that I found at the Dollar Tree in the Shore Living collection I'm going to use a mermaid, a starfish, a seahorse, and a little sailboat. So I'm going to put my little houses up because I need to remove the little clips off these pieces. So I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to warm up all the glue that's holding the little pieces to the mini clothespins, these little wooden clothespins. So now that I get that glue nice and warm, I'm just taking this little spatula and look, it just comes right off. Fantastic. And I'll go ahead and do that to all four of my pieces. So now I'm ready to do some more embellishing without using the clothesline pins or the clothespins. So now I'm just going to add the little sailboat on this house. And I'm going to add the mermaid on this second house. And then the starfish on the next house and the little seahorse on the last house. That way when the children come over they can say, oh I want to stay at the mermaid house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it works for me. <laughs> okay so here I'm just placing my last piece and so now I'm ready to do a little bit more embellishing and I'm going to use some of this decorative jute rope also from the shore living line. Or collection and I'm just going to wrap it around the top just to give it a little bit more interest and I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and adhere it on there and I also do on the front as well that way it's not hanging down that way it's nice in place so I just add a nice thin bead of glue and place it on top and I do this to all four of my little houses now I've set that aside and I picked up this board from Dollar Tree as well and I'm just going to go in with some of the Waverly Antique Wax, give it a nice coat and I'm just going to now place all these houses onto my board but they won't stay. So I took some of these tumbling, tumbling tower blocks and I'm just going to place these on the back and two of them fit perfectly across the back of each of these arrows so that was pretty perfect. And I did that to all four. Now I have something substantial. I can adhere this, these little houses onto my board. So I'll place number one. And I do the rest as well until they look like this. So now I'm going to take my lighter again. You know, I just I can't be encouraged. <laughs> and I'm just going to burn off all the little fuzzies off this jute rope. And I did add a couple more embellishments until they look like this. Let me know what you guys think. fish wreath form from the Dollar Tree also from the Shore Living collection 
and I'm going to use this roll of jute twine. This I actually picked up at the Dollar Tree in the floral garden section and I end up using this whole entire roll. Yes, I do. <laughs> so get ready. Hang on tight because we're about to go for a ride. I'm going to begin by just doing a nice double knot on one end of the starfish and I'm going to snip off a nice long piece that way I can kind of thread it through and so I'm just going to wrap it around each of these arms but I'm going to miss the part that's on the top the wire that's on the top and with this you just have to take your time so all I did was I went and watched one of my favorite shows and I just took my time and took care of it <laughs> that's all I did so now I'm going to go back in with some more jute twine and now I'm going to wrap around the wire that's up top and cover it completely with some more jute twine until I get it to look like this see just go around until it's all covered like this and look at that it has a really cute effect almost looks like a real starfish I think so now I'm going to do the back not completely I'm just going to do like a star shape on the back after all this is a starfish and I'm just going to begin the back with just securing a nice knot on the back and I'm just going to create a star shaped pattern on the back not completely but just enough that it'll give it something substantial in the back until it looks like this so now I'm just taking the excess and adhering it with a little bit of glue Make sure that it's nice and secure on there. Snip off the excess and just press it, press it in there. And that way you can't see where the end is. And now with the rest of the jute twine that I had left over, I went ahead and created five mini little tassels. And I'm just going to tie them on the bottom of each of these, I don't know, legs, feet, arms. I don't know, what do starfish have? <laughs> Oh wait, I think they're called appendages. <laughs> I think that's what they're called. So anyway, I'm just going to tie these on there in this manner until they all look like this. And now here's my lighter again. <laughs> have to burn all the fuzzies and you can tell where the fuzzies are because you'll see the jute twine kind of like spark up a little bit and you'll know that there were fuzzies. So yeah, and I like how it gives it like a burnt look as well. And the smells pretty good too, I gotta say. <laughs> it smells good. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm just gonna keep doing this until I remove all the little fuzzies. That way it's nice and clean, gives it more of a high-end look. It looks more polished, more put together. So now I'm just gonna go in with these embellishments and go to town. I don't show all this because this took me a little while, but here's how it looks. Let me know what you guys think. one of these camera shaped picture frames from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to remove the inside portions and I'm only going to use the little round besides the frame itself. And now I'm going to go in with these three paints. Two are Waverly, one is an Apple Barrel and the colors are Ocean, Lagoon and Key West. And just give them a quick paint job like this. And I'm going to make sure to do all the sides. And now I'll go in with some of the folk art chalk paint in the color white Adirondack and with my chunky chibi brush give everything a nice distressed look that way it gives it a little bit more interest and I do all the sides of course all four sides and I do the round as well now the round is not going to look exactly the same as the rest of the camera but that's okay that just gives a little bit more interest 
and since it's looking through the camera it doesn't have to be exactly the same so now that I have that nice and dry I'm going to go in with one of these laser cut icons and they have these in the little turtles so perfect and I'm just going to take the same brush that I used to paint and just do a light coat of the blue and some of the white so some of the Key West blue and some of the white until it looks like this now that's nice and dry now I'm going to take some of this nautical rope is the decorative one that they have now with the shore living snip off a piece and take a little bit of hot glue and glue the two ends together in this manner pressing them together that way you can't really tell where the ends are and now I'm going to take my lighter and do a little bit of defuzzing get rid of all the fuzzies with my lighter because these jute ropes they have fuzzies and they don't look very nice and I'm just going to take my detail hot glue gun and do a bead of glue to go all the way around my piece of jute cord and I'm going to place it on the lens on the outside lens and place my little piece back inside and again it doesn't have to be perfect because it's just how you look in through the lens and of course we're going to be watching the turtles so yeah that's perfect and now I'm going to take another one of these laser cuts and this one is in a shell shape and I'm going to do just a little bit of light dry brushing with the white paint that I had on my brush whatever's on there and I'm just going to adhere this to the front of my camera just to make it look like it's out by the shore and I'm just going to add a little bow with some blue ribbon just a little bow tie and with my Cricut I cut out this vinyl and it just says smile and keep going very encouraging number one is smile because it's a camera and keep going because the little turtles we want them to reach the ocean and keep going and I just thought it was super cute and this is how it looks to use one of these turtle pieces from the Dollar Tree it's the larger wood piece and I'm going to go in with this Waverly Antique Wax and now I'm going to take a variety of beads and taking some jute twine and creating this garland in this pattern and I'm just going to snip off the excess of course I've got to make a garland so now I'm going to create a nice tassel and I'm just going to wrap it around my hand cut open my hand as much as I can to create this tassel and I believe I wrapped it around a good 30 times or so snip off the excess and now I'm going to take another piece of jute twine and loop it through the tassel and I'm taking these three ribbons these three different color ribbons that will that will complement my tassel and my, all my DIYs so I'm just going to wrap it around this tassel that's not cut out yet and I'm just going to secure it with a nice triple knot and once I get that done, then I'll take another piece of jute twine and I'll tie the top of the tassel with it. And I think I go around a good 20 times or so. Just a nice thick covering on the top and secure it with another triple knot until it's nice and tight in this manner. And now I'll step off the excess and now I'll take the bottom portion and cut it open with my scissors make sure everything is nice and pretty and of course straight so now I'm just going to take this one end of my beaded garland and I'm going to tie it really well to the tassel and now I end up with three pieces of jute twine so I'll just add a little dab of glue roll it in with my fingers to make everything together and poke it back up the first bead or so and put the knot inside the bead as well if it fits and it does fit so now I just pull all the beads down and I do the same thing to my turtle poke it through the hole that's already there and do the same thing tie it nice and tight 
and then just add a little dab of glue to the end of this jute twine and roll it with my fingers and poke it back up in the hole of the first bead. This bead was a little bit bigger so I added a little dab of glue to keep everything in place. Now I'm ready to embellish. So I'm going to use this large piece which happens to be a pin. It's got the backing on it but I don't need it so I'm going to use my needle nose pliers and just pry it off. So once I get that removed then I'm going to see if it fits, fits perfectly. And I'm going to get my E6000 and add some E6000 all along the points of this beautiful embellishment. This is perfect. It looks just like a beautiful turtle shell. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. And I'm just going to add it on top, place it on there, and wipe off any excess glue that I might have gotten on there. Don't want any glue showing. And I'm going to use these laundry clips to keep it in place and allow it to sit overnight so it'll set. Now here it is the next day, nice and dry and nice and set. And here's how it looks. to make some turtles and I'm going to begin with one of these packs of mini wood turtles from the Dollar Tree from the Shore Living line and I'm just going to give it a coat of the Waverly Antique Wax and now I'm going to take these embellishments and I'm just going to place them on some of these turtles I only show three here at the moment but I do end up doing quite a few actually so we'll see that a little bit later but look, they fit so perfectly. Some of these have like a little ring on them because you could put them on a necklace. So I just removed those, but look how pretty. Oh my goodness, they're so beautiful. And for the rest, I was looking around my craft room and found these three Easter eggs that I had created for Easter. They're made out of glue and mica powder and hot glue, just the hot glue from the Dollar Tree. So I decided I'm just gonna make some more of these and I'm gonna put them on the turtles because they fit pretty perfectly. So here I'm just going to fill these up with hot glue, set them aside, and I picked up these really cute turtle silicone molds from Amazon, and I'm just going to fill these up with hot glue. I usually like to use some kind of a colored hot glue, but I wanted to paint the turtle, so I just did clear, and we'll paint a little bit later. So here I'm just making sure every nook and cranny's got some glue, so set that aside to set. And now I can unmold the Easter eggs. So here they just pop out. Look at that. Beautiful. And just the perfect size for these turtles. Who would have thought? Easter eggs on a turtle. <laughs> Gotta be a little resourceful. Okay, so here are my turtles. Let's unmold these. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So adorable. <laughs> you can have the kiddos fill these up. You can fill them up and have them unmold them. This would be a fun family craft for sure. Look how cute. And now I'm just going to go ahead and paint them. And I'm going to go in with these three Waverly colors. This one is Lagoon. This one is Malachite. And this one is Agave. And just like this, they're painted. Look at that. Super cute. <laughs> Look how adorable. You can see all their details on them. Oh my goodness, so adorable. And the majority of the color was the Malachite. Because I thought it was really cute. And now I'm going to go in with some of the Folk Art Dragonfly Glaze. And it is a color changing top coat in this pretty color. And it just goes on white, but once it dries, boy does it sparkle. So I'll go ahead and paint all six of these new Easter eggs in this manner. And then the, the three older ones that I had, I'm going to use this Folk Art Glitterific Fine in the color Rose Gold. And I'll do these three with this particular color just to give it a nice shine. And I'll set them aside so they'll dry. Here they are nice and dry. And I'll show you the difference. These six are with the Dragonfly Glaze. And then these other three were with the Glitterific in the Rose Gold. And here they are together. And there's definitely a difference. So they are with their particular colors and the Malachite. And I also added a little bit to these turtles as well just a tiny little bit just to make them sparkle 
And now I'm ready to add my Easter eggs to the rest of my little wood turtles. So I'm just going to place them on and of course adhere them with a little bit of glue like this. Begin with one of these wood puzzles from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to adhere all these letters to their base and I'm going to cover up the back with some craft paper and I'm just going to adhere with a little bit of hot glue and I do this all the way around and then I flip this over and now I'm going to go in with some of the apple barrel paint in the color khaki and I'm just going to paint the beach the sand so this will be the sand to the beach and now I'm going to go in with some of the apple barrel paint in the color Laguna and I'm going to do the shore the nice beautiful turquoise waters of the shore and now I'm going to go in with the admiral blue for the deep end for the deep waters of the ocean and I'm using the same brush to paint all these and allow the blues to blend and now I'm taking some of the apple barrel paint in the color white and with what's left in my bottle which is not much but just enough kind of dot the shoreline and create the waves and I'm just doing kind of a swirly motion to create a rough looking wave <laughs> I don't know I think it looks like a wave <laughs> you guys tell me and now with the same paint I'm going to take my chunky chippy brush and I'm going to add a little bit of dimension to all of the waters because you know the waters are choppy I think I look like waves in there a little bit but I do add a little bit to the sand as well because yeah the sand is not all one tone either so gotta gotta give it a little dimension and now I'm ready to add all my little turtles and look how cute oh my goodness I just can't this is so adorable and I do of course adhere them with some hot glue onto the board and with my Cricut, I created this vinyl and it just says, we walk by faith, not by sight. Oh my goodness, I thought this was perfect. How adorable. Because they do, they don't know that they have to walk to the ocean or run in their case. <laughs> so now I'm just going to add a couple of little tiny shells for embellishment and that is it. This is how it looks. going to use this mangled up <laughs> trellis from the Dollar Tree. I used it for another project so I just figured I'll just use this piece as well. And to take these apart all you have to do is kind of wiggle it back and forth and the welds will just pop off very easily. So here I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to use. At this point I'm not really sure I'm just trying to figure it out and you'll see the process here. So I'm just going to use my needle nose pliers and kind of do some rounds some swirls and for the most part it's working pretty well i do end up removing another piece that i felt like wasn't working and then i grabbed another piece that came off the other end so yeah this is basically my thought process and i'm just going to speed it up a little bit so you guys can see but i will tell you that somehow i got confused with turning on and off the camera and I turned it off when I actually put it together. And then I turned it back on when it was together. But you'll see here how it looks. Yeah, I apologize for that. So here I'm trying to figure it out. I don't like the way that looks. So I'm trying different ways. I'm trying to make it look like something, <laughs> some kind of sculpture. So here I finally decide, okay, I'm just going to flip this one around, bend this a little bit more, add another piece. Yeah, this is definitely my thought process here, guys. <laughs> Nothing was planned. <laughs> so here I decided to get this other piece, and here it is. Yeah. <laughs> so here they are, and here I decided to add some embellishments, and these are just the little pieces from the Dollar Tree. And I did adhere everything with E6000 because this is on metal, and then I, I reinforced it with hot glue. And here's how it looks.
I'm taking one of these terrariums from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to fill it up with some of these black rocks and white rocks. And I'm just going to create a little home for my little hot glue turtles. So I'll add a little plant in the back and this little fish on this piece of bamboo skewer and some shells, three different types, all from the Dollar Tree. And that is it. Super simple, super cute. Look how adorable. Oh my goodness how cute and here's how it looks This picture frame from the Dollar Tree has got the beads, a bead hanger on it. And I'm going to use a bunch of these little cubes and I'm going to create a square grid and place it in the center of the inside. And I'm going to go in with this apple barrel paint in the color China Blue. And once it dries, then I'll add some Mod Podge with my favorite Mod Podge brush, which, which is actually a makeup brush by Freeman. And I'll do a nice light coat. And now I'm taking this napkin this is from Amazon and it has the cute turtle on it. So I'm just going to place it on there and snip off the excess. Allow that to dry completely. Once it's dry, oh here I'm showing you what the package looks like. They're made in Germany. And now I'm going to take my lighter and burn off all the excess napkin paper. Go all the way around in this manner. And then the rest of it I'll just take my finger sander and remove anything else that's on there like this and now I'm not liking the gap that's all the way around this frame so I'm going to go in with that decorative rope that decorative jute rope and I'm just going to place enough to go completely around all four sides and I'll just do a little dab of glue and kind of squish it in there and I go all the way around in this manner just hot gluing it as I go and look how cute so of course this has fuzzies so yeah i don't need an excuse i don't need to be encouraged <laughs> just burn up these fuzzies burn them off just burn them off like this now i'm just going to add a, a little bow on the top just for a little bit of embellishment and a little shell in the center just to make it look extra cute like this super cute little shells these are all from the dollar tree and now for the bottom, I wanted to do something extra. So with my Cricut, I cut out this vinyl that says, go with the flow. I kind of felt like the little turtle was saying, I'm going with the flow, <laughs> go with the flow. So I just placed that on the bottom of my frame and I leave the beads natural just because why not? And then I do add Mod Podge to everything, to the napkin portion and the words. And here's how it looks. Going to use some of these sea glass pieces from the Dollar Tree and I'm also going to use some of these shells also from the Dollar Tree and these shells are beautiful oh my goodness I couldn't believe some of these shells and I'm going to take six of these scallop shells and I'm going to create some little turtles so I'm using the sea glass to give them his their legs and their head and the little tails. So I'm just gonna place them how I think it would look cute. And then of course I adhere everything with E6000 and underneath I fill it up with hot glue just to make sure they're nice and substantial. But look how cute. And now I'm going to use one of these ceramic kickstand signs from the Dollar Tree. And with my Cricut, I created this vinyl that says, strength grows in the moments when you think you can't go on, but you keep on going anyway. Oh my goodness, is that not a turtle or what? That is totally a turtle. And here's how it looks.
going to begin with one of these flower pieces from the Dollar Tree it's made out of MDF and I'm going to color this colorful flower with this chalkboard paint and then I'm going to do the Waverly chalk paint in the color Lagoon give it a full coat and then I'm going to go in with the white chalk paint and do a distressing all over this whole little flower well it's not so little <laughs> and I'm going to create a little riser for a candle so this is just so simple simple DIY it would make a cute gift as well and it would be very unique so once I get this all covered and distressed then I'm gonna allow this to dry but of course I'm impatient so I'm going to use my heat gun to dry all the paint and now I can proceed and I'm gonna take five of these little Dollar Tree square beads and I'm gonna paint them with the rest of the paint that I have on my brush like this just with light distressing now I'm going to use the Dollar Tree Super Glue with glue and add a few dabs of glue and I'm going to adhere these beads, these square beads, onto all these dabs of glue. These are the feet to my riser, allowed to dry completely. Once it's dry, cute little riser. Here is a candle that I actually found at the Dollar Tree. Here's how it looks and let me know what you think. Well, I'd like to come up and say thank you for hanging out with me and watching my video and if you made it this far especially thank you so very much hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did please give me a thumbs up I'd really appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet and if you want to see more definitely subscribe lots more is coming and until my next video stay healthy safe and strong and have a great great day bye bye